Hey everyone, and welcome to the Business of Bridal Sewing podcast. This week on the podcast, we are talking all about how to manage your workflow throughout the week in a way that will enhance the joy and the love that you have for your business. We're going to try and spend way more time and energy on the things that we love that bring us joy and the reasons why we came to this work. And we're going to try and minimize the amount of time and energy and effort that is required for us to do those things that we don't necessarily love about our business. All those things that we need to do that are essential to being able to have a thriving business, but that are not the thing that we love, which I'm assuming for you is working with brides and sewing on pretty dresses. So before we get to um, all the tips and tricks that I have for different ways to make decisions about what to do when in your week, before we start with that, there are some things that we need to know. The first thing that we need to know is all about ourselves because <laughs> every business is different. Um, nobody knows your business better than you. So it's important to kind of really understand the way that you work best and understand in which circumstances you thrive and in which circumstances you find yourself kind of like drained and exhausted at the end of the day. Um, I used to thrive really good when I was under a deadline. Um, I had a really good practice for many years of my life procrastinating things. And so I would always be up against deadlines and that's when I would get the work done. But just because that is when I would get the work done, done doesn't mean that that was the best time for me to do work. So I have actually switched and now I'm completely the opposite almost. I like to have things done so far in advance. I like to be very planned, very organized. That's how I work. The environment in which I work best is a visually clean and beautiful environment, one that is organized according to, you know, my workflow where the things that I use most are most readily accessible, that kind of stuff. I know this about myself and so I build a lot of that into my business. So think about your strengths and think about your weaknesses. Um, some weaknesses might be things that we just want to avoid having to engage in at all, but oftentimes our weaknesses are things that we can work on and become better at. So think about, you know, are the, is this a weakness that I want to engage in? Is this a weakness of something I want to avoid? Think about your strengths, like this is something that I do really good at, that I can rely on myself with. So know all about yourself. And then the next thing that we need to know is all about our businesses. Nobody knows your business better than you. You will want to look at not just the tasks that you have that you need to complete in your business, but the different kinds of work that you need to do. So we have people work, we have office work, we have sewing work, but even within sewing work, there are times when we need to do kind of tedious tasks like unstitching lace. Sometimes we need to do kind of tasks that require a lot of mental resources like pattern making and drafting and things like that. So knowing the different kinds of work that you have for your work, knowing what you need to do each week is very important. And then the third thing we need to know is how those two things interact. How do you feel about the different tasks that you're doing? Which ones do you enjoy? Which ones do you avoid? Which ones do you find to be emotionally and mentally and kind of like energy draining? And which ones do you find yourself like being really engaged in and kind of like give you more resources and more skills and abilities? So know yourself, know your work, know how those two things interact. When you have kind of a clear picture and you know kind of you know yourself and your business well enough, then you'll be able to make clear decisions on how best to schedule and organize those tasks and that work in a way that is going to be productive for you. Um the worst <laughs> kind of the the opposite end of it when you know things aren't working is when you feel exhausted frequently. Um, there is occasion where like feeling exhausted can can be a sign of like, yay, you did a lot of really good work today and you know, you, you plum tuckered yourself out, right? Because you did good work, you get a gold star for that day. But being consistently overwhelmed and consistently drained of all 
emotional energy, of all mental capacity, those kind of things. Doing that consistently um, over a period of time can be detrimental to our health in many ways, not just our physical health, but our emotional health. And it can be detrimental to our relationship with our business. If at the end of every day we are emotionally exhausted and we have no resources left, that makes it very hard to be kind of emotionally and spiritually willing to like show up to our business the next day. So you'll hear me when I tell you, talk about our, the tips and tricks that I have, you'll hear me talk about energy a lot, but you'll want to think, you'll kind of want to be aware of where your energy levels are mentally, emotionally, you know, kind of socially, those kind of things. And you'll want to be aware of which tasks drain those levels and which tasks kind of fill those levels back up. The worst place you can be is in a place where you are out of resources every day. So a a big concept in learning how to kind of flow your work throughout the week is to make sure that you always have some sort of reserve of those energies that you don't do too many things at once that take away those resources without giving yourself the ability to build those resources back up. So now that we know who we are, now that we know what we do, now that we know what resources we have, here are my six plus one bonus tips on how to manage your workflow throughout the week in a way that hopefully doesn't ever leave you just exhausted to all get out. So the next few tips that I have for you, there's about six of them, and they are things that I use every day, every week in my business. They are not brand new ideas. (laughs) There are so many really good books that are written about time management, about running your business, about the creative flow, so many. And there's so many different kinds of methods and techniques and things like that. And they have all kinds of names. But these are the things that I use in my business all the time. Um, So I thought I would share them with you. So the first one I have is to do more of the same kind of work together at the same time. So you are going to kind of take all of your tasks that have the same vibe or that are done in the same environment or that take the same kind of energy. So for example, an easy one is administrative tasks. Anything that requires you to sit in front of your computer and not in front of your sewing machine, you're gonna try and do all of those things together. That probably would require you to set a certain time aside in your schedule so that those things kind of don't pile up and you just spend, you know, you have your regular office hours that you spend doing all of those administrative tasks, all of those things in front of the computer. You kind of do them all at once, check them all off, and then that helps you move on throughout the day rather than, you know, remembering in the middle of the day that you were supposed to send an email. And so you stop and just think that you're going to hop on over to your laptop real quick and then hop back to the sewing machine. But either you get distracted or it just breaks your flow, that kind of stuff. So that's one way to do it. If you like need to be at your computer, sit down and do all your computer things at the same time. Um, I also try and clump things together that use a certain kind of energy or a certain kind of brain power. Um, For example, I can do really creative stuff. I can do like really analytical, rational thought stuff. I can do those two things at the same time. But when you try and throw people in there, I can't do peopling. I can't people like as a verb, like I can't do people stuff at the same time that I'm also doing creative stuff and also analytical stuff. I am an introvert. (laughs) You may be surprised to hear that because I just, I adore and I love people and I get very excited to talk about the things that I love, but it does require an output of a certain social energy. So I like to do all of my fittings on one day because when I get in the swing of that and I get in the vibe and like the people vibe, I love to live in that energy and I love to live in that space. But It does take me some time to get into that mental space. It takes me some time to physically prepare to have people in my home. I like things to be clean. I like them to be very organized. I like to look nice. 
you guys. <laughs> I live my life in jeans and t-shirts and ponytails. So if my makeup is done and my hair is down, then you know that I've either A, been to church or B, have seen clients in my studio that day. Those are the only two reasons why I would have my hair down. So it, um, it just kind of condenses all of the work that it takes to prepare for people to come to my home, to prepare myself to have people at my home, and to prepare myself mentally to have a social kind of day. Um, it minimizes the amount of times I have to do that, but it maximizes the joy and the benefit of it because once I am in a social vibe, I get to live there and experience it, and I get to meet a lot of people in that one day. I don't usually schedule things for... <laughs> Monday nights, unless there are things that I'm really looking forward to, because I know that at the end of that day, not only am I going to have a lot of notes and a lot of details for my brain to process, but I'm going to kind of want to, you know, do a little, a little me time <laughs> to kind of counteract that and get my little introvert self, like, you know, psyched back up and full of energy for the next day. Okay. So tip number two is exactly the opposite. <laughs> Maybe lumping the thing that you don't want to do all into one lump makes it very daunting for you. Like, let's say, this is so not me, but let's say that you just really hate unpicking lace and it just feels like it's so time consuming and so draining. If you dread doing something because it sucks so much energy from you, then I would suggest dividing it up and possibly putting a timer, like a very specific amount of time, setting a timer and just saying, you know, for this very short period of time, let's say 20 minutes, for 20 minutes today, I'm gonna work on unpicking this lace. I may not get it finished. I may not get very much done, but I'm only gonna do it for 20 minutes. I can do anything for 20 minutes. I get that from a yoga teacher. <laughs> she likes to say, we're gonna hold this pose for five breaths. You can do anything for five breaths. Do you like that yoga voice? <laughs> anyway, so I've kind of like applied that to like my whole life. If there's something that I don't want to do, if I'm sitting in an uncomfortable situation or like I'm just practicing like living in that discomfort, I will set a time limit for myself so that I know that there is an end to it. I know that I won't be having to do this forever. I mean, we obviously know that we don't have to do it forever, but sometimes it feels that way. And sometimes you're like, you know what? I can handle this for a short period of time and then I don't have to be done with it. So at the end of that 20 minutes, when that timer goes off, you can just quit that thing, that one thing for that one day, knowing that you're gonna put some more time and effort into it. What that does for me is it keeps me from feeling like I have to do something that is going to suck all of my joy and all of my energy. I will invest, let's use that word, I will invest a portion of my energy into something, but I won't let my energy levels drain to a point at which I just feel like there's not much left then one of two things happens. Either I get started on the thing and I kind of get in the vibe of it and it's really not that bad and I keep going. Or when that 20 minutes is up, I'm like, hallelujah, thank you for being done. And I quit that thing. If I do that, I have to make sure I set aside time, do like a little bit of chunk each day so that I make sure I get that thing done. But then I don't have to have that big overwhelming thing that either I don't want to do for any reason or that I hate or that just does not bring me joy or like sucks my energy out. Sometimes those things are better broken up into little pieces so that you can use a little bit of energy on it and then get an emotional rebound after that. You can build your energy back up and you don't have to be drained all the way till empty trying to do it all in one shot. I will also do this for things, maybe not necessarily things that I don't like or that I don't enjoy, but I'll also do this with things that are just very big. Perhaps they are things that like big projects that are overwhelming or maybe not overwhelming, but just something that I haven't like wrapped my brain out around. Like I haven't quite figured out how exactly I'm going to do all of it. So I will break it off into a chunk. I will start with the thing that I already know that I need to do. I'll start and I'll get into it. 
and then I will know where the next step is and then I can plan that next step. So dividing it into chunks. I talked a little bit about this in my last episode when I talked about how when I have a dress that requires a lot of work, I like to do fittings in between to kind of check my progress as I go because I hate going back and doing things a second time. (laughs) So I will break that up into multiple weeks and do a little bit on the dress over four weeks of a month and I'll have that bride come in for fittings and it'll just kind of be spread out. So I don't feel like I am in the middle of climbing a mountain and that I can't get anything else done until this one thing is done breaking it up, going back and forth between a couple different dresses, a lot of time gives me the mental space to kind of ruminate on what to do next with this big project. And just having that space away from it gives me the mental capacity to kind of simmer about things and for solutions to problems to kind of bubble up (laughs) from all of the research and the ruminating and the deciding. So that's tip number one and tip number two. Decide which things, which kind of tasks and which kind of work you have for that week. Decide which would be better kind of lumped together and doing kind of all at once at the same time and decide which ones would be better broken up into pieces either because you don't like them because they're daunting or just the nature of the work is better to do in smaller chunks rather than all together at one time. So then my third tip is to go for the quick win. (laughs) If you are feeling um, any sort of negative energy, like if you're feeling overwhelmed or you're just feeling sluggish or you just are dreading anything (laughs) or you just don't want to be at work that day, if you're exhausted, didn't have a good sleep the day before, I will go for the quick win. So I will look at my rack. I will look at my schedule. I will look at my to-do list, whatever I'm looking at, and I will pick whichever thing I can do the fastest and the easiest and or the easiest, one or the other or both. So I will find something that will give me the quickest sense of satisfaction and give me that boost of energy of things being completed. Or I will look at something that I can do the easiest without thinking about it. And I can just like slowly ease myself into the energy of the day. Either way, going for the quick win. This is great because again, it's feeding that energy. It's trying to keep your energy and your emotional and your mental resources above, let's say above the poverty line. So if you expend a little bit and then get some back, that's like a good feedback loop of, you know, beneficial things happening. If you have to expend a lot of resources, if you have to think really hard about things when you don't have a lot of mental resources, if you have to invest a lot of time and energy into something when you don't have very much, that's going to make it very hard to work with. So look for something that you can do right off right away that's going to give you back, that's going to invest in you into your emotional energy rather than taking it away so then the fourth tip is to do exactly the opposite (laughs) you might be sensing a theme here (laughs) so sometimes oftentimes when i have a particular project that is very overwhelming to me or that I just haven't quite figured out, like my brain hasn't wrapped around it and I haven't figured out all the details yet, I will conquer the most challenging thing first. I will do this specifically, there's many kinds of work, especially in alterations that I know relatively, you know, or exactly how long it's going to take me to do those things. And there are some things more towards the custom design or customizations or just like really big projects like bodice rebuilds and different things like that, that are more, um, more variable. I don't exactly know how long it's going to take. And that worries me sometimes that I'm going to run out of time for things. So I will do those things first. The things that I don't know exactly how long they're going to take, I will do them first. The things that are challenging, I will do first. Often that's because I just woke up and I have like a bunch of energy, not just woke up, but like I just got to work in the morning and I have a whole bunch of energy. And so I'll do the most mentally taxing thing first because I know in the afternoon that I get the afternoon sluggies, sluggishness, and that I need to eat and I need to take a break and my brain's not going to work as good in the afternoon as it does in the morning. So things that take a lot of brain power, 
things that are challenging, things that have like a variable workload that you haven't specifically defined yet. So I'll do those things so that I then have time. Like I, I know going into the week, I know how much time all the other things are going to take. So I know if it's going to be a week in which I have to work extra hours or not. And I'll know that as soon as possible. So you might want to go for the quick win or you might want to co- conquer the most challenging or most time consuming thing first, just depending on where your mental energy is or your emotional energy is. Okay. Tip number five, you may want to stick to a very rigid plan or a very rigid schedule. So I use this in two sort of ways, Uh, building a kind of routine something that happens kind of like every day or like every week in a certain way helps me kind of know what to expect. Um, It limits my need to make decisions at a time when I don't really feel like making decisions. Um, I spend less time planning and more time actually doing. So if I have a routine and a schedule, I know what I'm doing and exactly when to do it. I am ready and prepared for that thing. I've done it over and over again. I know I have all the things that I need for that thing. So this could look like if you are, you know, in the workflow of your day, if you get in in the mornings and you do phone calls and emails first, and then you move on to sewing. And then at the end of the day, you kind of have your fittings at the end of the day. Maybe that kind of routine works for you. Um, You can kind of match your energy as it flows throughout the day with the tasks that there are. Um, So that not only is you matching your tasks to your energy, but eventually going through that routine over and over again, your energy begins to match the tasks that are there. And you kind of train yourself to do certain things and to be prepared to do certain things and have a certain kind of energy at different times of the day. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, The other reason why I do this is sometimes I just need to give myself some accountability. (laughs) So I will pick the thing that I've been pushing off too much or the thing that I don't want to do and I will give myself a specific deadline for it. Um, For example, if there's a dress that kind of just kind of keeps going on and on and on, um, I might give myself an arbitrary deadline and say, I have to finish this dress today, no matter how long it takes. What that does for me is I don't want to work late, so it helps me um, keep going at a good clip, at a good pace, and making sure that I am not dragging something out, either, um, you know, knowingly or unknowingly. And it also gives me the motivation I need that I just need that thing done that day because that's what I have on my schedule. (laughs) So I don't have to think about all of the other things in my schedule. I just have to think about that one thing. So there's clarity of mind and there's also dedication to completing it. So those are two different reasons why you might want to stick with a rigid plan or a routine or a schedule. But (laughs) tip number six, you may also want to go with the flow. Now, I've not gone back and counted up how many times I've said energy (laughs) in this episode, but it's been a lot. So I'm a big believer that we're not robots. (laughs) I'm a big believer that we're human beings and that some of the things that I love most about this life and this world is the variety that there is. Um, I don't know about you, <laughs> but this work for me it requires a lot of social energy. It requires a lot of mental capacity and mental clarity, and also a lot of like my engineering brain, right? My like analytical thought brain. It also requires a lot of creativity and finding out new solutions for old problems and different things like that. There's a lot of different kinds of energy that this work requires. And sometimes I have that energy and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm feeling more creative. Sometimes I'm feeling more thoughtful. Sometimes I am feeling spent and like I don't have a lot of energy or emotion to give. And, you know, when we think about our businesses, a lot of times we do ourselves the disservice of not thinking about those things. We kind of think about things in like a kind of a clinical way. We think about things in quantifiable means as like how much time do we have? How much money are we making? Those kind of things. And we kind of forget that we are vibrant, dynamic 
people <laughs> who have different kinds of experiences, who have different kinds of joy. And I mean, I got into this business because I really love the creativity and I really like it brings me a lot of joy. <laughs> if there's something you probably have noticed about me, it's that I get very excited to talk about these things because I do love it so much. So it would be a disservice to me if I approach this business just as a business and as a clinical thing, because that's not why I do this. I do this because I love it. So that being said, I more often than not, this is my it's the last one on the list, but it is the most important one. The one that works the best for me is to go with the flow, to go with the flow of my energy, to say, to take an inventory each day, um, even each hour, <laughs> anytime I'm making a decision on what to do next, to take an inventory of my energy and say, you know, like what kind of energy do I have right now? What kind of energy am I missing? And to match the flow of my work with the flow of my energy. So sometimes, like I say, when I wake up in the morning and I'm feeling fresh and I'm feeling excited, I will do the thing that is hard or that is challenging because I know that that's going to require more mental and emotional and kind of creative resources. And so when I have those resources, I'm going to use those resources to the biggest effect. So I'm going to do like the more challenging things. When I, like I've said this before, <laughs> when my brain just kind of dies in the afternoon, it turns to mush, but I still have work that I need to do. I will look for a task or a work or a dress that I can do that will actually replenish my resources. So, I mean, I'm picking lace is like an example that I've used so many times, but if I don't have a lot of uh, mental energy or mental capacity for the moment, if my engineering brain is just tired and pooped out for the day, then I will unpick lace and it, you know, if I'm able to do that for, you know, 45 minutes or an hour or so, that kind of works as meditation. It works as a place for my brain to kind of slowly start to build back some resources to kind of be calm and chill and be able to um, have that time for my subconscious brain to start sorting things out. Um, so I can get things kind of cleared out of the queue. <laughs> Sometimes things come into my brain faster than I can process them. So just having that like processing time kind of builds that energy back. So when you're looking at your tasks, like I said, kind of at the beginning, you need to look and see which kind of things will will give you and replenish um, your resources, different kinds of resources that you need for different kinds of projects and which ones will drain those resources and kind of match that with the resources you have. The hardest thing that we can do sometimes is to kind of run ourselves ragged and to constantly be in a state of exhaustion. And I understand that that is a necessity sometimes. Um, sometimes you can get to the point where you just have to get the dress done. You just have to pay the bills and you don't really have a choice. So my seventh tip, my bonus tip, is to try and structure your business and try and structure your workflow in a way where you have the space to be able to choose between two different things. Give yourself some buffer time. Give yourself some opportunity. Like don't have your schedule be so rigid and don't have your schedule be so packed that you are just working on the next thing that you have to do. But give yourself some space to be able to make the choices where you have like, you know, even just deciding between two different dresses that you're working on that day um, can give you the opportunity to kind of go with the flow a little bit better and to be able to replenish resources instead of always just exhausting them. So bonus tip number seven, <laughs> give yourself the opportunity to be able to make the space to be able to make choices. So then the last thing I want to talk about is what happens if you are just drained. <laughs> what happens if no matter what you do, no matter how you manage your workflow, you are left just drained and exhausted and totally unmotivated. Guys, there are some days <laughs> like I have beautiful, wonderful, pretty plans, but there are still some days where I just can't, where for whatever reason, I am exhausted in one way or another, physically, emotionally, and I just can not like 
It's trying to get a cat to take a bath or something like that. Sometimes I just can't. So there are a few things that I do to try and either reconnect myself with the joy and the passion and the love that I have for this work or to refill my resources so that I am able to do the work that I need to do. So one of the things that I try and do just on a general basis is I try to build my resources before I expend them. There are certain things that I do in my morning routine that kind of invest in myself. Um, You can call them self-care. You can call them, you know, like whatever you want to. Um, I used to leave those things for the end of the day after the kids had gone to sleep. But I found that at the end of the day, when the kids have gone to sleep, I am already exhausted and I'm out of resources. (laughs) So I don't even have the resources to try and like build my resources to try and take care of myself. So I do those things during the day that sets a really great mindset for the day that gives me energy that I'm able to just get a really good jump start on the work day. It means that I work actually a little bit less. (laughs) I work a half an hour less every day than I possibly could work because I'm investing upfront in building the resources that I need to be able to do my work. Um, There's other things that I do throughout the week at different times when I am finding that I'm coming up against a wall um, where my my resources and my energy are running out faster (laughs) than I'm able to build them. So um, one of those things is to kind of think about my goals and to think about the things that I want out of my business. Um, so that'll connect me with my my motivation. So one of my goals is I have a specific travel goal that I'm working towards. Um, so I will listen to podcasts or I will watch PBS while I do my um, while I do my work, and I'll watch travel shows um, if I can find anything about that specific place that I want to go, so that I can be excited about that. So that gives me energy to work in my business. It gives me motivation and inspiration. Um, Instead of just feeling like I have to do something or I need to do something, um, it gives me the vibe that I want to do something because I want to be able to accomplish the school. Um, Another thing that I do is I like to connect to the things that I love about this business specifically, not just what I want out of it, but the reasons why I came to it. So I will listen to like TED Talks about creativity and the way that creative genius kind of flows in and out of us. There's so many on there. It's a great platform. I listen to music like all day long, every day, and I use music to um, not only match the mood that I'm in, but to manage the mood that I'm in. So I have playlists for every different kind of mood. I listen to so many different genres, but I also have playlists that I've curated to help me transition from one mood or emotion to the next. So they will start out in the mood that I am, and the songs, like each different song will kind of transition into the next emotion because sometimes I'm just feeling like emotionally stuck in one place or emotionally blocked. So just listening to that music can kind of create that catharsis for me to move from one emotion to the next. Just in general, (laughs) music is great. Even just turning on some happy music can kind of just make you happy. Um, Sometimes I just, especially when nobody's at home. (laughs) to listen to me. I will sing really loud at the top of my lungs. Um, especially when I don't feel like singing at the top of my lungs, I will just physically do it. I will physically do the action. And then that like your body doing that action actually sometimes creates the mood and the emotion after that. So there's a couple of things. And then the last thing on my worst days when I just cannot Like I know that I need to sew, I know that I need to work, but I just really just can't. (laughs) What I will do is I will actually give myself permission, sometimes for a short period of time, sometimes for an afternoon, occasionally, very rarely, but occasionally even for an entire day. I will give myself permission to not work and it sometimes kind of (laughs) creates a problem for me for my schedule. Um, But usually it's in response to being like very, very blocked in my work. Um, And what I'll do instead is I will clean my house. (laughs) Because first of all, 
you never have to feel guilty for cleaning your house. <laughs> Everybody's house needs to be cleaned. But the reason why I do it is because it creates a physical space that is organized, that is taken care of, that is visually uncluttered, that is not chaotic in any way. And that I can visually see every time I look at it that something has gotten done, that something like I've made progress. Now, that's because I work in my home. So I will, you know, obviously be able to see my house. So anytime I can see chaos, um, like visually chaotic things, things that are not put away, it just pulls a bit of my attention in that direction. So if I'm not careful, then I can find my, my attention pulled in 29 different ways. I have things that I need to do in all of the different roles that I have in life. And that leaves me with so much of my emotional energy being caught up just in worrying <laughs> and just in trying to organize things and just being afraid that things aren't going to get done. So being able to create a physical space of calm and not chaos of peace um, allows me to feel that energy and allows me to kind of, um, if you will, snip those different threads that are pulling my attention from elsewhere so that I can focus more on my work. So those are all the different ways <laughs> that I manage the workflow. Those are kind of some of the things that I do when my workflow is just broken and just won't work. And it really all comes down to managing the flow of your energy and the flow of your resources so that you can continue to find love and joy in this work and to be able to love the thing that you do every day, day in and day out. Because isn't that isn't like the definition of a good life to love the things that you do and to be able to do the things that you love? So hopefully you love this work like I do. And this has been an episode of the Business of Bridal Sewing podcast. Until next time. Happy stitching.